Today we're talking about pricing a home and how to do it successfully, so stick around. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this is something that interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every Monday. In this week's video, we're talking about pricing a home, how to do it successfully, and how so many people get it wrong. Pricing is a critical component of successfully offering your home for sale. A lot of people get it wrong. And when done incorrectly, sometimes it's the agent's fault, and sometimes it is you as the homeowner. Wait, please don't turn off the video. I promise I'll explain. So let's start with the agent. The sad truth is out there that some agents just really don't want to tell you as the homeowner the truth. They're so desperate to get the listing that they'll promise you anything and tell you anything you want to hear in order to get you signed on the dotted line. In their mind, they can't really reduce the price of a listing that they don't have. So they'll do whatever necessary to get your home's listing under contract at whatever price you want, whether or not it's actually correct for the market. They may even give you some empty promises saying that they can get more money than anybody else. The reality is the market is the one that sets the final price. The only way to price a home properly is to compare it against the market. You wanna look at both past sales and current sales. Let me explain. The only way to truly price a home correctly is to look at what's going on in your marketplace. You wanna look at past sales that are similar in size, similar condition, close proximity to yours, and anything that has sold recently. You really don't wanna go any older than six months because you wanna think sort of like an appraiser in this situation. You wanna look for the homes that match all of that criteria as close to yours as possible. What was the average price that they sold for? And how do they relate directly to your home? The other aspect of this is looking at what's going on in your current competition. As I've said in other videos, when you put your home up for sale, you're actually entering a competition. So it's important to understand what is the competition out there right now? What are other similar homes in terms of style, condition, location, and size? How do they compare to your home? You wanna use an objective point of view when doing this, which I understand as a homeowner can be quite challenging. If there's any question about whether or not a home is truly comparable to yours and it's active on the market, ask your agent to take you to go see it in person. This could give you some really direct knowledge about how the home truly compares to yours. The goal with pricing the home is to get it right into the market sweet spot. You want to get it to a point where the buyer would see enough value in the price that you're offering. Now let's talk a little bit about the effects of overpricing and underpricing. In the real estate market, it's almost impossible, especially in today's market, to underprice a home. If you underprice a home, either intentionally or unintentionally, uh, the market will self-adjust. You will bring forth a lot of showings, a lot of activity, and a lot of interest, and possibly multiple offers on the property. Those multiple offers could actually drive the price up above your asking price. And the final price that is agreed upon by both the seller and the buyer is the true market value price for the home. And if that's above where you were, well then it's already self-adjusted to where, you, where it should be. Now let's talk about overpricing. There are a lot of sellers out there that'll say, well, I wanna price high because I wanna have room to negotiate and every buyer is gonna come in and lowball me. Well, let me tell you that that's just not the case, especially in today's market where inventory levels are low. Buyers are savvy. They understand what a good deal is and isn't. Think about it, most consumers today, before they buy something, let's say as simple as a coffee maker, will do a ton of research and price comparison on what's out there. Different retailers, different brands, and they're really looking for what is the best value for them. Don't you think that they do the same thing when it comes to homes? If they are very savvy and familiar with what's going on in the market, either by their own research or working with their agent, they're gonna understand true value of a home. Therefore, they are going to be willing to offer a fair market price for the home. So if you set your price too high, you actually could be discouraging them because they might immediately think, well, there's not enough value here to justify this price. I'll just go look at another home. Also, you wanna keep in mind that if you actually price it too high, you're pricing it out of the market, meaning the right buyer that should be shopping for your home isn't ever going to see it because 
you've priced it into a whole different price point. And sometimes that could be the difference of just a few thousand dollars. I'll give you an example. So let's say the right market value for your home is somewhere between, I'd say 295 and 300. And you say to me, well, I wanna price it at 310 because I wanna give some room for negotiation. I understand where you're coming up, but think about it like this. Most of the buyers that can actually afford your home, let's say at the 295 to 300 range, aren't even gonna look at it. When they do their online searching, they're gonna be searching by price brackets. So for example, they might only be searching for homes listed between 250 and 300,000, which means your home at 310 doesn't even show up to them. So think about that when you're pricing a home as well in terms of the strategy for your online buyer searches. So let's talk about one of the most common questions. Should I price my house at 299,000 or 300,000? It's a one dollar difference, but does it actually make a difference to buyers out there? In a traditional retail setting, setting the price at 299,000 gives the trick in the mind that they're saving a big chunk of money because the first number is a two instead of a three. It's only one dollar less than 300,000, but it does something to the psyche of a buyer. However, in the situation that I just explained previously, if you're searching for homes online, you're gonna be searching in price brackets, 250 to three, three to 350 most likely. So if you actually price your home at 300,000 flat instead of the 299, you have a chance of actually showing up on more buyers search results. So you have to ask yourself which way do you prefer and want to market your home. Let's talk about one of the last risks of overpricing which is becoming stale on the market. The higher you price your home, the less likely you are to get offers, the longer your home is going to sit on the market. It now becomes stale and potential buyers might think that there's something wrong with it even if there isn't. It might deter them from even making an appointment to step inside to see it or if they do come and see it and they like it, they might use the fact that you've been on the market for a long time as a negotiation tactic and they might really try to beat you up on the price. In fact, the longer you stay on the market, the higher chance you have of actually selling below your market value. Now at the risk of insulting every homeowner out there, as I mentioned earlier, it's not always the agent's fault when a home is not priced uh, properly. In fact, you as the homeowner have the deciding factor on what the price should be set for your home. In fact, it's your home. You get to decide what price it is. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you have an agent that's not really willing to tell you the truth of what's going on in the market, you could unknowingly be choosing a price that's not right for your market. You as a homeowner may also insist on a price that your agent feels is just not right for the market. But again, it's your house, you get to decide the price. However, remember, if you insist on a price that just doesn't fit the market, you take on all the risks that I've pointed out today. A really great agent won't be afraid to tell you the truth, whether you listen to them or not. One last thing to consider when determining a price for your home. Let's say that you insist on pricing it above where the market is, and you actually land a buyer willing to pay it. Now it has to appraise. You see, in a shifting market, especially as home values begin to rise, sometimes it takes a minute for the appraisal to catch up. You see, appraisers only pull past sales, unlike you that looked at the current competition. So keep in mind that even if you list at a really high price and you get a buyer willing to pay that high price, the home actually has to appraise in order for the financing to go through. Now you can use online market analysis tools, but in order to get a true understanding of what's happening in your market, I do recommend that you obtain the services of a local real estate expert. As always, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you found this information helpful. You know, if you know anybody that can benefit from everything I've discussed here today, please share the video with them. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comment section below. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the new video I release every week. And of course, my goal is always to make the content you're looking for. So if you have an idea for a future video, please leave it in the comment section below. I'll see you next week.